John, what is the political overtone of Budget 2021? Uh, the political overtone was uh, spend, 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 and let's hope that that convinces people to vote for us in the next election. You know, as I said in the in the in the post, um, if they do not get their majority back, then they should call a, a royal commission of inquiry because th it doesn't seem to me that they've left too many areas where the the NDP, can, for example, can attack them for not spending enough, or the Conservatives can attack them because so many people are getting money, they're, they're going to they're gonna like it. So, you know, I think bribe is maybe too harsh a word, but there are, there are certain policies in this budget that are clear electoral bribes. It's been referred to as an election budget. Talk to us about the architecture of it and uh, the Liberals' electioneering plans. Well, I think the most egregious, for example, is the uh, $500 one-time payment going to seniors in August. Uh, if you're 75 and you're on old age security, you get $500 simply for being 75. Um, and then thereafter, you get a, a, a more money every single year. So, you know, these are things that governments have done down the years. This is what, what you do before an election. Conservatives have done it as much as liberals. I think the difference here is that the government has positioned it as a, a growth budget. You know, they've taken a huge gamble on ramping up spending. I mean, if you look at the over the horizon of the framework, it's $143 billion. Front end loaded, because $100 billion of it is in the first three years. And they've claimed that this is not uh, an electoral budget, but in fact, it's a growth budget. They're, they're trying to stimulate growth. And there are things in there that will stimulate growth. There are... There are um, policies on artificial intelligence, on quantum computing, on genomics, that you would imagine if the money is wisely spent could produce results. Nobody could possibly calculate what those results are going to be, though. So you are taking on faith that putting in money at one end produces growth at the other end. And I think that that's a huge gamble. And we've left ourselves open to less optimistic scenarios occurring. If, if something, uh, another pandemic came down, God forbid, or another recession, we are pretty exposed after this budget. Tell us about what the opposition is uh, having a field day with. Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole suggesting there was uh, nothing in the budget to address the debt. Uh, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh suggested there's nothing on uh, pharmacare. And uh, the Bloc Québécois have said, uh, will take money for a uh, health care. How do you see this playing out? Well, I think, as I said, there's so much money going around that people are going to, in general, are going to like it and uh, subsequently vote for it. I think the health care issue, though, is interesting because, you know, while the, gov the federal government may say that the federal debt is sustainable, anybody who's looked at the provincial debt long term knows that it is not sustainable, largely due to rising health care costs. And so over a, at some point in the future, and probably in the near future, the government is going to have to come to an accord with the provincial governments to give them more health care funding. None of that is accounted for in this budget. And, you know, we are on the cusp. Everything's got to go right for this scenario that the government has just painted to, to come good, i.e. That, that the debt to GDP ratio peaks at 51 percent and then this year and then thereafter goes downhill. Um, that's, that is their fiscal anchor. I think many people would have preferred to see uh, the debt servicing cost to revenue ratio be the fiscal anchor. That is, that the debt servicing cost should not be allowed to become more than 10% of revenues. And to their credit, in this budget, they don't. And in, the, in the final year, although the debt servicing costs doubled to $40 billion a year, um, they do not rise more than 10% of, of revenues. But that, again, is, as I say, if, if all goes well. How likely is it that we are going to see an election in the coming months? I think very likely. I mean, I think we already know that the NDP are not going to bring down the government during a pandemic. So the, the budget will get a pass. But I think everything the Liberals have done in this budget suggests that they are uh, gunning for an election before the, the, uh, before the fall. I mean, they, they just expend, extended the wage subsidy to September. The Canada recovery benefit goes to September. You don't want to have a, an, a, be brought down late fall after all these 
benefits have been removed and people are t potentially hurting and blaming the government. So I think, um, you know, the signal that they were going to give the, the OES to the uh, to over 75s in August suggests to me that September is the uh, is the sweet spot for the Liberals.